Good morning. Myself, Mehak Bhatia, Assistant Professor, IMT College of Science and Technology, Greater Noida. Today, I'm going to discuss about a topic called functions in C language. So, uh, we'll discuss about functions in detail. Now, what are functions? Uh, let's begin. In C, we can divide a large program into basic building blocks known as functions. So what basically are functions? Functions are small block of code um, that we use in a program to make it more simple. Okay. So um, small blocks of code are known as functions. The functions contains the set of programming statements enclosed by curly braces. So uh, we can uh, make a function, we can define a function by using curly braces. We write the code of uh, the function inside the curly braces of a function. Okay. Uh, a function is a group of statements that together perform a task. Okay. So as we know that a function is block of codes uh, that we write together, which performs a specific task. Okay, functions are set of statements that take inputs, perform some operations and produce results. So uh, this is basically the, the usage or the, uh, uh, the relevance of using a function that we give it some input value. It performs some operations and produces specific results for us. Okay. So the, fun the operation of a functions occur only when it is called. Now this is very important. This point is very important. Functions are only uh, executed when they are called. We can form a function, we can make a function, but it will get executed only when it is called. So uh, we need to call a function to use it in the program, okay? So next is define the code once and use it many times. So this is one of the advantages of using functions that we can write the code once and we can use that block of code n number of times in our program. So this is basically a advantage, one of the advantage, one of the very important advantage of using a function that we can write the code once, we can define a block of code uh, we can define a group of statements inside the curly braces and we can call it many times. So the important feature that we get from using a function is reusability of code. So we can uh, reuse the code many times. We do not need to write the code again and again. We can use it many times. Okay, so rather than writing the same code for different inputs repeatedly, we can call the function instead of writing the same code all over again. So we can call the function and uh, this saves our time, time and efforts. Okay, next is functions are used to perform certain actions as they are important for reusing the code. So in the coming slides, we are going to see how can we create functions? Okay, so we have just uh, discussed about the brief definition or the usage or the advantages of using functions in a programming language. Now in the coming slides, we'll see how the functions are formed. How can we write a code uh, with the help of a function? Okay, so let's, uh, let's see how can we do that. So how do we create a function? Here on the screen, you can see uh, uh, the syntax of creating a function, okay? So how do we create a function? We have to write the name of the function, okay? So you can write the name of the function and you have to give the, uh, the return type of the function, like which value, uh, which type of value the function will return. So here I'm just using void, you can write any data type. The value which you want to return, you can write that data type here. So in this uh, this small example, we do not need to write any, um, any data type. So I'm just uh, writing void here, okay? 
So void and function name. So you can write the name of the function of your choice. Okay. Let's suppose uh, you are adding two numbers. So you can give the name of the function as sum. Okay. Or uh, you're getting the result of uh, uh, multiplying two numbers. So you can just uh, write result as the name of the function. So the name of the function is your choice. You can write any name uh, as you like. Okay. So you write the return type, you write the name of the function and you have to write these brackets here. So now why do we use these brackets here? You can either leave it empty. Okay. Because uh, it's a syntax. You have to write the name of the function and you have to write the brackets. So you can leave it empty or in the coming slides, we will see how can we pass parameters here uh, to uh, give values to the parameters. We will see that in the coming slides. Okay. So for now, let's just leave it empty. So uh, what is the syntax? Void function name and inside the curly braces, this is what I was talking about uh, previously, the curly braces. So you have to write the code of the function inside the curly braces. Okay. So this is a small example of the syntax that I have written here. Void, the name of the function is my function. You can write any uh, name. Okay. So here I have used my function and inside the curly braces, I have just written one statement. Okay. You can write n number of statements because function uh, can be group of statements. Okay. So you can write n number of statements here. So I have written a statement printf hello world. Okay. So I am just printing the value of this hello world. Okay. So what this function is going to do? When I call this function, this function is going to return, uh, this function is going to print hello world on the screen. That's it. Th this function is just do doing this. But you can write n number of uh, lines of statements uh, that you want to uh, in your program to get executed. Okay. Now, uh, this is just a brief explanation of the example. My function in the example was the name of the function. Okay, inside the function, which we call the body, okay, whatever lines of code we write inside the function are is called the body of the function. Okay, we have to write the code that defines what the function should do. So whatever code we uh, want to write, we write it inside the curly braces and that is called the body of the function. Okay, next void means that the function does not have any return back. You can use other data types also here if you want to return a certain kind of value from the function. But if there is uh, no value to be returned, you just use the keyword void. Okay, void means that no value is returning, but the function is returning no value. Okay. Okay, next, let's, let, let's move on to why we use functions. Okay, I have briefly discussed it before. That what is the need of using a function? The function can reduce the repetition of the same statements in the program. Okay. So we can write the block of code once and we can use it n number of times. The function makes the code readable. Now, what does readability means? It makes it simpler for the, for the programmer to read the uh, program. For example, uh, a programmer is writing a very big program a very complex program. So writing the code as it is would make it difficult for the programmer to, uh, to execute or to, to read, right? So what the programmer does, it divides the program into small blocks. So that increases the readability of the program. Okay, next is there is no fixed number of calling functions it can be called as many times as you want. So it's not like you can call the function only once. You can call the function any number of times as you want. So if you want a code to get repeated 100 times, you just need to call the function 100 times. You do not need to write the whole code 
the definition of the code 100 times. So that saves your time. That is also one of the advantage. The function reduces the size of the program. Now, definitely, if the lines of the code are reduced because you are not writing the definition uh, n number of times, so that will definitely reduce the size of the program. Next is, once the function is declared, you can just use it without thinking about the internal working of the function. Now, what is function declaration? We'll see in the coming slides. Okay, so this is a syntax of functions. Int, I have, instead of void, now I have used int, okay? So int is the return type, okay? So whatever value the function returns, uh, here the type of that is written. So I have used here int. That means the function is going to return integer type value, okay? So this is called the return type. It is written before the name of the function. If the function doesn't return any value, you just need to write void, okay? After the return type, you have to write the name of the function, okay? Now, inside these brackets, uh, we have written parameter type. What is parameter? Parameter type is uh, the value of the parameters that you pass. It's type, like, like what type of the value a variable has. That is called the parameter type. Now, you can write the name of the parameter after the type of the parameter. Here I have just taken a variable A. You can write uh, the name of the parameter as you like, okay? And uh, you can write one, two, three, four, any number of parameters just by separating them with a comma, okay? So here, here I have separated the variable, uh, the parameter with a comma and written another variable, another parameter name with B, okay? And the type of the parameter here is int only. Okay, now after writing the parameters, the list of parameters, you have to write a semicolon. That would mean that uh, the statement or the line has ended. So this is how you declare a function in your program. Okay, so now let's move on to the next part. There are three aspects of C functions. Now, what are these three aspects? Number one is function declaration. Number two is function call. And number three is function definition. These are uh, the most important parts or aspects or terminologies that we use with a function. Number one, we declare the function. Okay, now what does declaration means? A function must be declared globally in a C program to tell the compiler about the function name function parameters and its return time, okay? So how would a compiler know that you, you are going to use uh, a function in the program? You do it by declaring the function, which is called function declaration. You just need to write the name of the function along with the parameters that it has and the return time that we have seen previously, okay? And end it with a semicolon. By this, you will declare a function, okay? Till now, we have not defined the function. We are not, we have not defined the function. That we will do in the next part, okay? So what is defining a function? Uh, now, it contains the actual statements which are to be executed. Now, this is the most important aspect to which the control comes when the function is called. Here, we must notice that only one value can be returned from the function. What is function definition? The block of code that we write inside the function is called defining the function. The actual lines of code, the actual statements that we saw in the previous example. I wrote printf and uh, printed hello world. Okay, So that was the definition of the function. So the actual statements that are to be executed are called uh, the definition of the function. And function definition can be execute, executed only when we call a function. So first we declare a function. Second, we can define a function. 
okay now how would the definition or how would the block of codes uh, execute only when we call a function so here comes the role of the third aspect which is function call now function can be called from anywhere in the program okay so basically it is not the third step it can be the second step uh, so you can first declare the function call it and you can write the definition uh, elsewhere also in the program so it will uh, call the exit call the function definition okay so a function can be called from anywhere in the program the parameter list must not differ in function calling and function declaration so you have to make sure that whatever parameters whatever parameter list you are uh, giving in function declaration it should match with the function call okay next is we must pass the same number of functions as it is declared in the function declaration so we, we have to write the same number of functions as we have declared in the function declaration okay so these were the three aspects of functions in the coming slides we are going to see how we can use these three aspects in a function okay now first is defining the function let's see how we define a function so the general form of function definition in any programming languages is this this is the syntax okay return type the name of the function and in the brackets we write the parameter list okay with the curly braces we write the body of the function so but body of the function means the actual code that we need to write in the function so a function definition in c programming consists of a function header and a function body the first line of the syntax is called the function header and the rest of the part is called the function body okay so what are the parts the return type now what is a return type a function may return a value so may return a value it can or cannot return a value if you want a function to return a value you have to give a return type if you do not want the function to return any value you just need to write void keyword okay so the return type is the data type of the value the function returns some functions perform the desired operations without returning a value in this case the return type is the keyword void okay now the second part is function name this is the actual name of the function whatever name you want to give to the function you can write it as it is the function name and the parameter list together constitute the function signature okay so this is a new term function signature the function name along with the parameter list if you are passing any parameters together they are called a function signature so function signature this terminology is part of a function definition okay next is parameters now what is a parameter parameter is like a placeholder when a function is invoked you can pass values to the parameter uh, in the previous example we saw that uh, uh, we took two variables a and b with the with the type int integer type okay so a and b we can pass the value to the parameter when we invoke or when we call the function we can pass the value at that time okay now this value is referred to as the actual parameter or argument okay so uh, the parameters the value of the parameters that we provide to the function definition when we call the function is called actual parameter or argument okay the parameter list refers to the type order and number of parameters of a function so what all uh, is included in a parameter list uh, the type of the parameter like we took int uh, float we can take any type okay the order in what sequence they are placed and the number of parameters like how many parameters you are passing one or two or three any number of parameters okay so parameters are optional as i have told you parameters are optional that is a function may not contain any parameter okay so a function can be made without any parameters okay next is function body 
after the parameters we move on to the function body so uh, the function body contains the collection of statements that define what function does so the body of the function contains all the lines of code that defines the function okay so this is the definition you start with the return type you write the function name here the return type is int function name is heading parameters or arguments okay so here i have i am not using any so i have just written void okay you can write void or leave it you cannot you uh, you also uh, can leave it and not write anything only okay now just remember while giving the function definition do not put any semicolon okay because uh, why do we not put a semicolon here because semicolon means the line has ended okay but this function has not ended it has just started because after the header the body of the function is also there so do not write any semicolon after the bracket in the function declaration that we did above there we had to write uh, the semicolon okay but in the function definition we do not write any semicolon in the header of the function definition okay after the header we have to write the body or the lines of statements or the the, the code that we need to write uh, that is called the body okay here uh, there are you can write the statements and you can write return zero let's suppose you have given the return type int but the function is not you do not want to return any value from the function so you can simply write a statement return zero in that case okay that means the function would return the value zero okay so here i have taken a small code uh, small code which defines a function okay the function name is max okay and i have taken two parameters num1 and num2 okay and what it does is it returns the maximum value between a two variables so how do we define this function we have to write int max is the name of the function and the parameter list which includes num1 num2 and their return types okay here i have taken one more variable result which will store the value of the result okay as as in which number is greater so i have taken if else block here if num1 is greater than num2 so the result will store the value of num1 okay else result will store the value of num2 and what this function is doing it's returning result now here it's not returning zero because we wanted to return the value of the result as in which number is greater so it will return the, the result okay so this is how we define a function now what are function declaration the second aspect is the function declaration so as i've explained already explained that function declaration tells the compiler about the function name and how to call the function so it's just uh, telling the compiler that we have used a function in the program the actual body of the function can be defined separately as we have defined it uh, in the previous slide so we can define it separately but a function declaration needs to be given in a program so how do we write it it's simple just return we have to write the return type function name and the parameter list and see here we are using a semicolon because in function declaration we have to use a semicolon and in function definition when you have to write the body of the function after the header you do not need you, you do not need to write a semicolon okay so for the above defined function max the function declaration is as follows so the example that we saw uh, in the previous slides as in which number is greater so how do we declare it we write the return type int write the name of the function max and in the parameters i have to write the uh, the name of the parameters num1 and num2 okay with a semicolon now parameter names are not important in the function declaration only their type is required so the following code is also valid so 
it's not mandatory to write the name of the parameters in the function declaration. Okay, so you just you can just write its data type. So this statement int max brackets int comma int is also valid. Okay, you can write the name also and you can skip it also in function declaration. Okay, now let's move on to the third aspect, which is calling a function. Okay, so first we saw uh, how can we define a function. Then we saw how can we declare a function. And now the third aspect is how can we call a function as in calling a function. So you have written uh, the definition of a function. You have also declared it, but you cannot use it until you call a function. So how do you do, do that? While creating C functions, you can, you give a definition of what the function has to do, okay? This is what we saw in the definition part. To use a function, you will have to call that function to perform the defined task. So you need to call the function so that all the blocks of the code that you have written get executed, okay? When a program calls a function, the program control is transferred to the called function, okay? So whenever you call a function, the control of the program gets transferred to that function, okay? All the other lines of code are skipped. The, when you call a function, the control moves towards the function code, towards the definition of the function. A called function performs a defined task and when it returns a statement, when the when its return statement is executed or when its function ending uh, closing brace is reached, it returns the program control back to the main program. So what it does it is it executes all the line of code till the ending of the function definition, okay, which is the curly bracket, the closing curly bracket. After it is uh, the curly bracket is reached, it returns the control back to the main program okay um, we can uh, see this with a diagram here how does a function work so we have started a function with the header files i have defined the function here okay int sum and in the brackets i have taken two parameters a and b and what is it doing what is the code of the function it is returning the sum of a and b Okay, now this is the definition part of the function. Now in the main program, I have to call the function. So how do we do that? Here is the column. We write the name of the program. Uh, we write the name of the function. And in the brackets, I have to pass values of the parameter that I have used in uh, the function definition, which is A and B. So I have written the name of the function sum and in the brackets, I have to pass values to A and B. And the values should be of integer type because we have used here int. So I'm taking two values here, 10 comma 30. So what it's going to do is it's going to give 10 to A and 30 to B. So A becomes 10 and B becomes 30. Okay. Now, after I have called the function, the control uh, goes to the function definition. So this block will get executed first. Uh, A plus B, which is 10 plus 30, uh, that is 40, is going to be returned. Now, after the closing bracket, the control of the program moves back to the main program, which is printf, sum is, and add. Because we are... Uh, we are storing the value of the return uh, a plus b in add variable. So what will add variable have now? 10 plus 30, which is 40. So add will have 40. And we are printing the value of uh, this add variable, which is sum is 40. So what, what output we are going to get? Sum is 40. Okay, is it clear? So this is the program. Uh, I have already explained it with the diagram. It's going to print the output as 40. Okay. So how C function works, we have already discussed it. We declare the function. Okay. De declaration 
uh, or de declaring a function is a step where we declare a function, okay? We just tell the compiler that we are going to use this uh, function in the, uh, in the program, okay? Here we define the return types and parameters of that function and definitely the name of the function also. Then is the calling of the function. Calling the function is the step where we call the function by passing the arguments. As we have seen here in the program, sum 10 and 30, this line is the calling of the function. So we write the name of the function and we pass the arguments, okay, in the function. Next is executing the function. Executing the function is the step where we can run all the statements inside the function to get the final result. So after the function call, uh, the program control moves to the function definition and all the codes of the function are executed. After the uh, uh, codes are executed, you will return a value. So next is returning a value. Returning a value is the step where the calculated value after the execution of the function is returned. Okay. Now the last part is exiting the function. After giving the return value, uh, uh, the control exits the function. Okay. And goes to the main program. So exi exiting the function is the final step where all the allocated memory to the variables functions are destroyed before giving full control to the main function. Now this step is the last one. How does uh, uh, the function exit? How does it end? It basically uh, destroys all the allocated memory to the variables that we have used inside the function. Okay. After destroying the allocated memory to the variables, the control moves back to the main function. Okay. Okay. Now let's move on to the next part of the function, which is the type of the function. There are basically two types of functions, user-defined functions and library functions, okay? Now, the example that we just saw in the previous slide was an example of user-defined function, okay? So what is a user-defined function? As the name suggests, user-defined function uh, are the function that are tailor-made, okay? The users define it, the users create it as they wish, okay? Uh, Functions, user-defined functions can be improved and modified according to the need of the programmer. Okay, that is what tailor-made means. Whenever we write a function that is case-specific and is not defined in the header file, we need to declare it and define the function according to the syntax. So we can define it uh, if it is already not defined. Okay, so there can be two cases. A function can already be defined, predefined, okay? Or the function needs to be defined by the user. So if the function is not uh, predefined, you have to define it on your own. And that is what a user-defined function is, okay? Now, what are the advantages of user-defined function? Uh, we can track large C programs easily when it is divided into multiple functions, okay? This is basically an an exam advantage of a user-defined function. The code of these function is reusable in other programs. These functions are easy to understand, debug, and maintain, and you can call it n number of times from any place in the program. Okay, so these were some of the advantages of user-defined functions. Now let's move on to the library functions. A library function is also called an inbuilt function. Okay. Now, what is an inbuilt function? Inbuilt function is basically a function which is already defined in the compiler. Okay. Uh, you just need to call it. You do not need to define it because it's already defined. Okay. A compiler package already exists that contains these functions. So there is a compiler package which contains these functions, each of which has a specific meaning and is included in the package. So the meaning of those functions are also included in the package. Uh, Built-in functions or the library functions have the advantage of being directly usable without being defined, whereas user-defined functions must be declared and defined before being 
used. So the user defined functions have to be declared also and then defined also and then called also. But the inbuilt function have the advantage that they can be directly uh, called because its definition is already stored in some of the compiler package. Okay, for example, POV is the power function, SQRT, square root function, and there are many uh, STR, CMP, okay, string comparison, it's used for string comparison, STR, CPY, string copy, okay, so the name of the functions has to be written this only, POV and the brackets, so you cannot change the name of the inbuilt function because it's already defined, we just need to use these functions, we just need to remember it and use it. For example, here we can see a program. Um, we are using header files here and we are declaring a number. Uh, we are providing 49 to that number. The value of the number is 49. And we are, here we are using the SQRT function. Okay. So see, I have not defined SQRT anywhere in the program. Okay. Because it's an inbuilt function. I am just writing SQRT and in the parameters, I am giving here number. Okay. The value of the number I've already given, which is 49. Okay. And we are storing the result of this function in square. Okay. So what this function will do, this function will basically give us the square root of the number. So what is the number? 49. And I'm directly printing here the square. Okay, the square root of 49 is, so what output here I'm going to get? The square root of 49. So the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so here I'm not uh, defining this SQRT function. Why? Because it's an inbuilt function. Okay, so th these uh, are the inbuilt functions or the library functions. Now uh, we can see the advantages of library functions. C library functions are easy to use and optimized for better performance, okay, as they are already uh, defined. So it, they are better to use and are better optimized, okay. Uh, next point is the C library functions save a lot of time. That is function development time as they are already defined. So we do not need to write the code for that function. So it saves our time. And the other advantage is C library functions are convenient as they always work. Okay, they are very convenient to use as they are already defined. So uh, this was about the types of functions, user defined functions and library functions. So this was all about functions. Uh, thank you. And I hope you like the lecture. Thank you.